Go ahead. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start now. Uh, welcome everyone to our B11 live unboxing live stream. I am super excited to unbox this wheel. So let's just get straight into it. So I've got my box cutter here. Just open the side up. shipping container or the shipping box and then we've got the inner box. All right, here we go. Okay, so just from opening it up, we can see that we have the wheel down there. We get a charging cord. This will most likely be US spec when we ship to customers. And also we have the charger. So let me just check the amperage of the charger real quick. Also, this is a pre-production unit, so this charger may or may not be the one that they ship with the actual production wheel. So, it looks like the charger is 1.5 amps, standard, that ships with most of the, or all of the 84 volts in motion wheels right now. And also, I really like this, it comes with a pump to pump up your suspension, and it looks like it goes up to a little over 20 bar or 300 PSI, so you're going to have a really wide range of pressures that you can adjust your suspension to. This is also a nice add-in for just in case you want to adjust your tire pressure while you're on the road. They might take a while with this little pump, but you can definitely do it and it can save you in a pinch. So it's really nice of them to include that in the box. So I'll just set that to the side here. So this looks like a pretty standard packaging method with one on top, one bottom, and I'm assuming one on each side. Yep, it looks like that's it. This is super exciting. So let me just go ahead and get the wheel out of here. Oh, it's a bit heavy, but I can already feel the suspension engaging. All right, and here it is. Yep. So here is the first look at our V11 demo unit. So, I'm just going to engage the kickstand right here and I'll go ahead and put it up on the table where I can talk about some of the awesome features of this wheel that I'm super excited about. So let's see, first test of the kickstand. Is it sturdy? Yes. This is an awesome kickstand. It looks like it snaps into place so it won't fall down when you're riding, which is awesome. Okay, so features of this wheel. I'm excited to see the features in person. So, firstly, this is the first time InMotion has looked into 3 inch tires. So this is a th 18 by 3 inch tire, the same size that's on the MSX, it's going to be on the S18, and of course on this wheel. So when we combine that with the suspension, I think this is going to be an awesome ride. So let's take a look at the suspension first actually. So if you can see, there's a little place right here, and if you unscrew that, I'm assuming this is going to be where you can attach that pump. Yes, so there is a standard Schrader valve in there. It looks like there's one on each side. Yep, so if I flip the wheel over, you can see that there's one on each side, so those are independent. And when I was taking it out of the box, I could already feel, look at that suspension travel. That is awesome. All in this area, it looks like they've refined the pedals a little bit. That's got a little bit of a lip here. We haven't really seen that in the past. Oh, interesting. So the grip tape is a lot coarser than the grip tape that's shipping on the updated V10 pedals. And this also has total coverage over the pedal with a little bit of rubber here to stop it from scratching up the body. So that's cool to see. Let's take a look at that headlight. Wow. That is massive. This thing looks like it's going to be so bright. Actually, can we turn it on? Use it charged. So we have four out of five bars. 
looks like we have a running light here that is always on. Let's take a look at that headlight. Oh, interesting. So if you hold down the button and press the light, you can toggle the running light. Wow. That just blinded me. <laughs> <laughs> that is so bright. It'll be hard to show on camera, but let me just point at the wall. So if you'll notice, it doesn't actually shine above that second half, which means that you're not going to be blinding cars or pedestrians that you're coming towards at nighttime. And wow, this thing is so bright. When I put my hand in front, I can feel the heat, and I can't even look at my hand. This headlight is insane. I'm not sure if you can hear, but when the headlight is engaged, there is a fan right here. It might be a bit tough to see. There we go, you can see it right in there. So the fan is engaged when the headlight's on, and if I turn it off, the fan is going to turn off. So it's nice to see not only that it has a fan to cool the headlight, but that it's not on all the time, unlike the M-Super Pro, which has a relatively noisy fan that stays on all the time. So while we're looking at the headlight, let's go and look at the taillight, which also looks super awesome and futuristic. The mudguard below is rubber, so it won't get damaged if you crash. And I'm assuming that once this wheel is rideable, it will light up when you brake, just like some other wheels that we've seen. Let's take a look at the charge ports. So the charge ports are located back here, and we can see dual three-pin charge ports. So if you get two of these stock chargers, that will let you charge it up to three amps, but with fast chargers, we'll be able to charge even faster than that. So, InMotion has upgraded the internal charging wiring to safely support up to 5 amps. So if you get two 2.5 two amp fast chargers, you'll be able to pump 5 amps into this wheel and charge really quickly. Which you might need to charge up that pretty big 1500 watt hour battery. Now something that really surprises me is how thin this wheel is. Because compared to some of the other wheels, say for example the 16X, let me see if I can do a side-by-side -side comparison of this wheel versus something like a 16X for thickness. Because the 16X is a relatively thick wheel. And I'm really impressed how thin InMotion has managed to make this. So if you look side-by-side -side here, Yeah, wow, that is impressive. InMotion has also decided to upgrade what was going to be a 1420 watt hour battery into a 1500 watt hour battery. They were actually able to squeeze more cells into this thing, which I think is just amazing. So let me set this guy back over there. While we're in this area, let's take a look at the new trolley handle. So it looks like it's locked down, which means it's not going to come up while you're riding. And there's a trigger right here in front of the lift switch. So when you push that trigger, the handle comes up and it locks in place. Wow, that is really sturdy. One of the most common complaints with the V10 and the V10F handle was that it was a little wobbly when it was extended side to side and a little bit front to back. But this handle is solid. I'm assuming to lower it, you just press the handle again, and it locks back in place. Let's check out the height of the handle. So I'm 6'1", so this might give an idea of how this wheel would feel for riders on the taller side. So I think this is a pretty good height, maybe a tad low. Nothing like the crazy heights that the Kingston wheels have, but I think this is definitely very usable. And for riders of other heights, I think this handle is going to be just awesome. I love how sturdy that is. Wow. That is an awesome handle. So, we've already looked at the front a little bit, but I do like how the battery display points straight up at the rider. So, in the past, in motion wheels have done this, but it's sort of towards the front. Like, the battery display comes out towards the front so you can see while riding. But this one is right here. So that's cool to see. So I know we already talked about the fan cooling the headlight. 
And it does look like there's sort of a passage for air to flow through here. If I look through these vents, I can see a heat sink, which I'm assuming is attached to the headlight. And yeah, there's not too much open space in here, but I think there's just enough to allow for that, that triple cooling that Motion was talking about, the conduction, convection, all that awesome stuff. It looks like a speaker. So it looks like a single speaker for system sounds. And where the fan is for the headlight, in the front, on the opposite side, opposite the tail light, inside this little crevice is where the speaker is. So it's a bit hard to see, but all the system sounds are going to be coming out through there. And InMotion wheels don't ship with the volume at the loudest setting, but they can get pretty loud. So I think this is going to be perfect for you know, being able to hear top speed warnings and things like that. Um, so let's see. While I'm looking for other things to observe on this wheel. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and I will answer them for you. If there's anything you'd like me to look at, things like that. So unfortunately, this particular unit that we received appears to be in transport mode, which means that it's not, it's not balancing right now, so we're not actually able to test out the balancing behavior. I believe you will need to or we will need to download a separate app because the stock in motion app has not yet been updated to support this wheel, so we're unable to connect. But that will definitely be fixed by the time the consumer version came out. How's the brightness compared to the MSP? Brightness compared to the MSP. Good question. Let's take a look. So I'll leave this wheel right here and I'll get our MSP. So with MSP, you aren't able to engage the light fully until it's actually spinning up in the air. So it might be difficult to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Hmm. So I'll just show you how the MSP looks against this wall here. So it's pretty bright, but the throw isn't necessarily super wide. So we keep that in mind. Compare that to the V11. Yeah, wow. <laughs> that light is insanely bright. I will see if I can compare them side by side. I can sort of point this one up, put the MSP below. So, V11 up there, and then below that, whoops, let me turn on the headlight first. The MSP headlight is still very respectable, but the V11 has a lot wider throw. So there's your comparison for the MSP versus oh. So there's your headlight comparison. I'm super excited to test this wheel at night. What about brightness compared to the 16X? Brightness compared to the 16X. So let me just grab the 16X over here. Another great headlight on this wheel. So I believe the first setting is the brightest. Yeah. So you can see that both LEDs are engaged on the 16X, which is its brightest setting. So this is a bit difficult to show inside because at night it might spread out a bit more. This is super close to the wall, so it's not going to be throwing very far. But even at this close distance, you can see that the V11 just has a huge throw, and it still maintains really good brightness at the center of that. The 16X is also really bright. Possibly even the center of the 16X headlight is maybe a tad brighter, but that throw is a lot less, whereas the V11 is able to maintain that for a larger area. So there's your comparison between the 16X and V11 headlights. What is the pedal height? Here, let me go get So the pedal height will actually change depending on your suspension settings. So if you pump up the suspension really high, you will actually get a higher pedal height because it will be less likely to sag when you're standing on it. But if you have it a bit lower and you let it sag when you're just sort of in a neutral position, it might be a bit lower. So I don't believe the wheel comes with suspension pumped up at all for shipping purposes, you know, so it can be as small as possible in the container. 
So it looks like it's just turned off. So it looks like it has a standby feature, which is configurable in the InMotion app. That's something that the other InMotion wheels have had as well. So it looks like the standby is set to maybe around five minutes out of the box. You just put this guy back. So yes, if I get a tape measure here, thank you. I'm able to measure the pedal height. So, with the suspension fully upright, thank you. Suspension fully upright, looks like the pedal height is going to be around six and three quarters, almost seven inches. So if we want to compare that to another wheel, let's say we want to compare that against the MSP. I'll just lean this back down really quick. So the MSP pedal height looks to be surprisingly a little bit lower. You gotta keep in mind this is a constant pedal height. So this is gonna be the max pedal height for the V11 at nearly seven inches. But for height, it looks like the MS Pro could go up to maybe six and a half inches. So there we go, comparison of pedal height MS Pro versus V11. What about, can you compare it to the 16X pedal height? Yes, so let me just get the 16X back over. I'll probably just measure over here actually. So let me get my tape measure. You want to know the as well. Yeah, we can do pedal height comparison for all the wheels. So it looks like pedal height for the 16X is around six, between six and six and a half. So still very good. And for InMotion's prior flagship, the V10. It looks to be a little bit under six inches at the lowest point. It's a little bit hard to tell because the angle of the pedals can also determine your maximum height. So at the max, it looks to be around six and a half. So the 16X, the V10, and the MS Pro all have pretty comparable pedal heights, I'd say. And the maximum height of the V11 suspension with no weight on it looks to be actually a bit higher than those. So now let me just check with the suspension all the way engaged as much as I can. Pedal height looks to be still pretty high just by eyeballing it. Around maybe five and a half to five and three quarter inches, maybe getting up to six. So still very respectable. When you look at that travel, I'd say you're going to be pretty good for pedal height, no matter where your suspension is set at. Rose, people want to see you next to the V11. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a tall rider and a shorter sure. rider. <laughs> All right, here is the pedal height of V11 versus the pedal height of Rose. <laughs> oh, like with the trolley handle engaged and oh, everything. Oh, sure. Let's put it down then. Yep. So to engage it, there's a trigger right here, so you push that and it should come up. Oh, cool. And it locks in place, it's really sturdy. So this is where the handle comes up for someone who's 5'3". For 5'3"? Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go, I'll hand that back to you. Awesome. Alright, if you guys have any questions, just keep them coming. We'll be making a lot of content with this wheel, so not to worry, there will be plenty of awesome shots in the future. Uh, someone wanted to know if you could do a free spin test. So, yeah, unfortunately this wheel is still in transport mode and we're not able to connect to the app yet because it's pre-production. So we're waiting on InMotion to send us that special app that will let us connect. So we're not able to do a free spin test right now. But we can tell you that the max speed for this wheel is going to be 50 kilometers per hour, but InMotion is considering the option for enthusiasts to release a 
higher speed firmware up to 55 kilometers per hour. For those of you that have seen uh, Kuji Roll's video, he was actually using that experimental 55 km per hour firmware. So that is something that is uh, available for those enthusiasts. And I believe one of the InMotion representatives said that firmware will be available on the Electric Unicycle Forum, for those who are familiar with that. But so that's one of the future plans that InMotion has for this wheel. So the top speed is 50, but possibly could be up to 55 with special firmware. How accessible is the valve for inflating the inner tube? So, that's a good question. Let's check. So, the rim design looks very similar to the MSX with that sort of spoke design in there. Let's like rotate the same. around. <laughs> yeah. So, there's the valve right there. So, the suspension blocks a little bit. Let's just see if I can unscrew that there. So maybe not the most accessible tire, but I think that will definitely be alright for those of you that have a quick release pump as opposed to one that screws in. Let's see, with the attached pump. Oh! Wow, I just noticed this. So the attached pump actually is a quick release. That's what this handle right here is for. It looks like it still screws in though. Maybe it's not a quick release in the traditional sense. It looks like this lever determines whether or not the inner pin is engaged. Let's check. Is that a quick release? I'm actually not sure if it is. Might be a bit tough to get in there. So this, this pump is mostly intended for the suspension. Let's see. It won't slide right on. What if I flip the lever? It just looks like the thing is pointed in line instead of pointing out. Yeah. So it looks like this might not actually be a quick release, so you still have to screw this in. But let's go for it. Let's go ahead and try and screw this in. And this will definitely take longer than if you had a quick release pump. So you just have to pull the stem back a little bit. Then you can start screwing it in. So if you don't want to have to go through this process of screwing it in every time, which actually it looks to be a little bit difficult, there's actually a attachment you can buy on Amazon that you screw into a screw type pump and it turns it into quick release. So I'll actually be, one second, I'm just going to get that from the back of our warehouse and I'll be able to attach this a lot easier. So if you have any more questions, now would be a great time to ask so that we can form a queue and we can just keep those answers coming. So I'll be back in just a couple seconds. Rose, do you know if this is going to have a factory seat option? Um, I did hear from Emotion that there would be a seat option, but I'm not sure if, I don't think it will come out of the box. box. With this. Yeah, it'll be an additional accessory. Go ahead. So this is what I was talking about. You can buy these on Amazon for really cheap. It just converts the screw type to a quick release type. And I have one of these personally. I use it all the time. It makes things so much easier. So let's just screw this on. There we go. Oh, might have misthreaded a little bit. That's interesting. It doesn't screw in very far. Maybe it's locked? The pump? Hmm. Well, let's see if that's enough. So I'll just get this in there. Yeah, so it is going to be a lot easier with that quick release. Hmm. So that answers that question. <laughs> Technical difficulties. It looks like it should be able to go in a bit farther. Let's see, these two pieces look like they separate. Is there any chance that they would? 
So putting this issue aside, it is somewhat easy to get access here if you have a quick release, as long as you have a suitable pump attached to the end of course. But yes, it's not the most accessible uh, valve that I've seen in a wheel because that suspension is blocking it just a tad, but it is definitely doable. You can do this without an extension as long as you have one of these things. Alright, I will keep trying at this, but in the meantime, do we have any other questions? If each side has a suspension piston, how do you balance to make sure the wheel is leveled? Right, so, good question. The pump has a gauge on it right here. So, I don't think there's a way to make sure they're exactly the same pressure, but as long as you pump them up to the same amount and don't let too much air escape when you release it, they should be at the same level. That is a question that I had too, but it's actually surprisingly easy to get this to precisely what pressure you want. So as long as you just pump them up to the same amount, you should be good to go. But yeah, good question. Any more that we have? Is the wheel hub aluminum? Yes. So pretty much all electric unicycles right now use aluminum for the rim and motor construction. Looks like the suspension is all aluminum too. So that's cool to see. Do you know what the range is for the PSI on the suspension? So I don't know what this particular actual suspension unit is rated for, but the pump that they include goes all the way up to 300 PSI. I've done a little bit of research on mountain bike front fork suspension because that's the closest analog that I can find to something like this. and. I don't think I've seen anything over 200 PSI in terms of ratings, but it will definitely depend. Once we actually are able to pump up the suspension and test it out a little bit, I think it would be a good idea for us to release sort of a suspension guide, depending on weight, for V11. So since all the staff members here have different weights, we can adjust the suspension to our preferences, and we could all do a report on what we believe is the best. Center strip and saddle made of metal. So this piece is a plastic cover, but I can hear that there definitely is something else underneath. And I'm assuming that's the metal support, because if you can see down here, there's two or there's one aluminum slide piece that's split into two sections, and this is what actually goes over the piston. So this black piece right here is stationary, but this is actually what moves. So they just cover it with plastic as not to damage the metal. But up top, the foam is actually really comfortable. It's that sort of springy, rubbery type of foam. Let's see, how does it feel compared to MS Pro? It's definitely a little bit squishier than the MS Pro. The V10 pads are actually a little bit different. They have a different finish on them and they have a, different bit, of, a bit of a different material. So I'd say the closest analog in terms of squishiness is the upper portion of the 16X right here because this pad isn't actually this flat there's actually another portion that extends deeper inside here so this part is way squishier than say this part so if you have a 16X or have come into contact with one you'll know how squishy this inner portion is and it's actually a little bit squishier than that in places and it's squishy along this entire area I think this is going to feel really nice during riding and it contours up like this, so there's no sharp edges that press into your legs. So I think the ergonomic for this wheel are also going to be something to look forward to. Good question. I think that's it. All right. So this has been our live unboxing of V11. I am super excited to get this wheel up and running and make some content with it. And I hope you guys are too. So. Be sure to follow us on our socials. Of course, if you're watching this right now, you know who we are. Uco.us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. We'll be posting, hopefully, a lot of YouTube videos once we can get this thing up and running. Guides, writing footage, and a promo trailer, which is going to be cinematic. It's going to be awesome. So be sure to follow our YouTube if you're interested in that. And thank you guys so much for coming. If you have any other questions, we will be posting a recording of this live stream up on our social media platforms and we will be in the comments looking for any questions that we missed. 
So if you have any burning questions, put it right there. And I will see you guys very soon. Thank you so much.